What's going on champs and champets? It's Fire Monkey here and we have some brand new news regarding Horde Rush that I kind of hinted at in yesterday's YouTube video regarding, you know, tons of updates, tons of changes and everything else. So in today's YouTube video, I'm going to be your guide to everything you should know regarding the most recent Horde Rush hotfix. Now keep in mind that all this information is stuff that kind of happened yesterday, so if you've played since yesterday, you might not have realized these changes actually occurred, but they are changes that are in the game right now, and they're stuff that at least when Horde Rush first launched, they weren't there. And this is basically just like overall a buff for the mode, making it easier for people to enjoy, especially since we are in the zero build version, which I think just made Horde Rush a lot harder overall, because you know, you couldn't build, you couldn't build away from the caretaker or anything, the storm just always kept getting shorter and shorter, and there wasn't really that many ways to siphon health. Now firstly, the first bit of changes regarding Horde Rush happened a few days ago, so every time you eliminated one of the cube monsters, you would get one shield, that's right, only one shield for every elimination, and they recently buffed it by doubling it, that's right, they took it to two shield instead, wacky major increase, right? But at the same time, I really think that the two shield instead of one is a super good benefit, just because when I've actually been playing through, I felt that it helps me out a lot more, because instead of sitting there eliminating one guy and instantly just losing all that shield, basically because I was in a Horde, I can shoot a few of them and I'll gain basically double the shield and I can end up around like the 50 shield area whereas previously I would only be in like the 25 shield area you know I'd be a lot more at risk for actually getting eliminated so that is a nice little change that they've actually implemented but the other day aka yesterday they put in a lot of really good quality of life changes so firstly the scythe now gives three siphon per hit previously the scythe gave zero siphon and you know I do got to keep in mind here that the scythe is pretty rare to find but now it does three siphon per hit so you're able to regain health with it whereas before you would not be able to regain health right you would just get your normal one shield per elimination and that is all you're getting so the scythe is basically very powerful once again it still does the same amount of damage as before it's just now you actually gain some health back from it which can make it as another resource for actually healing yourself whenever you're in a lot of combat right whenever you want to swing that scythe around because in its original state right without the actual siphon being enabled that thing was overpowered and well actually no I mean that thing was underpowered because you would get in a giant horde like this and you just were kind of out of luck, right? You would have to switch to another gun because there was just nothing really available for you in order for you to actually gain all those rewards and, you know, everything else that you needed so that you could stay alive. It just felt like a death wish trying to actually use the scythe in this mode, whereas now, you know, it's just a little bit more powerful and it's a lot nicer to use. Next up, the shield bubble has been vaulted from this mode. A lot of people are like, wait, the shield bubble's in this mode? Yeah, the shield bubble was in this mode, however, it was one of those rarer items, but now it's been vaulted so you'll no longer find it in the loot pool, which also means the other items in the loot pool will become more common because they're not competing with the shield bubble for which one's going to drop to the ground. The cube monster part drop rate has increased by around 10 to 20%, so every time you eliminate one of the cube monsters over here, and did they just spawn out of the ground? What the? Okay, then that, that's weird. But uh, every time you eliminate a cube monster, now you have a higher percentage chance to actually get those parts in order to upgrade the sideways weapons. Because as you guys probably know, if you've played Horde Rush Zero Build recently, the sideways weapons are enabled and you are able to actually get those. You know, the rifle, the minigun, you're able to get those and upgrade them with cube parts. So it's nice to see that they are a little bit common here. But at the same time, it seems to still be a little bit rarer. Because as you can see, I'm elim eliminating tons of cube monsters and I haven't really gotten that many. I've only gotten eight cube parts as of now. And then one of the other changes is that chrome splashes are now 5% more common and drop in stacks of 4 rather than before where they dropped in stacks of 3. Basically every time you find the actual um, chrome splashes you'll get one extra one and they're just going to be more common to actually find. It's probably, you know, to balance out the whole entire system since we also know that, you know, they disabled showed bubbles so it's like, alright, we gotta increase the odds of something else, let's do it with chrome splashes. And then when it comes to other weapons such as the Evo Chrome Burst Rifle, that one has become more common to find in the game. So before you know, whenever you wanted the burst rifle, you would always be able to find, like, the shotgun, at least, for Evil Chrome, but you had a very hard time actually discovering where those burst rifles were, whereas now, you know, their drop rate is actually pretty decent, so you're able to find them basically at the exact same rate as you would with the actual normal shotguns, and in fact, is that, nope, that's a shotgun right there, okay, you know what, I, I, I had a point to make, but I guess the game doesn't want me to make that point anyways. Uh, one of the final changes that actually happened with the most recent content update though for Horde Rush and the hotfix was that the storm only does one damage per second all the way through the first storm circle and the second storm circle. So once you start going to that final third circle, the caretaker fight circle, that is when the storm is actually going to be a lot more risky and will start doing a lot more damage. But in its earlier stages, such as right now, you have nothing to really worry about because it's just kind of there, right? It's just kind of like, hey, you know, the storm is only going to do the bare minimum amount of damage and it's nice 
nice to see because especially with some of the rotations with the storm circles right now there's tons of locations where it just kind of gets stuck in a giant mountain and if you don't have chrome splashes or the scythe or you know like the mythic which has been vaulted now the like claws one the wolf one then you're kind of screwed because you have to make your way all the way around a giant mountain just so you're able to actually make it to the objective and that does take a lot of damage especially since we don't have normal siphon or I guess yeah normal siphon we only have a uh, siphon for shield it can be very risky so it's nice to see that in the earlier stages they are being more forgiving now and allowing you to kind of just you know free roam in the storm as much as you want like I'll go in the storm right now and we'll see as I do one damage here you can see I'm in the storm right now and it's only ticking for one damage basically giving me like a hundred seconds without getting hit to make it all the way back to the circle if I need to which is more than enough time because if you're in the storm and you can't make it around a mountain in like a hundred seconds that's either a very big mountain a very wide mountain or you know you just kind of ended up taking the wrong pathway and kind of waited a little bit too much now if it's in the third storm circle I guess I can understand but overall they really did a lot to make horde rush a lot more fun especially in the zero build variant because as someone who prefers the building enabled one zero build horde rush is still very enjoyable and it's a lot nicer now because it doesn't feel like I'm going to lose every single game because before the hotfix updates I was getting maybe one win out of every 10 matches played which is a very low amount of odds and then after the hotfix update it seems my wins have been a lot more common because the random teammates I play with they're not having issues where they're, they're just dying out to zombies they're not having that many issues because they're able to get more shield and whatnot and it just seems that you know the rest of the team is able to stay alive a lot longer so I would say that overall this is a pretty good update in hotfix or horde rush and you know it's something that I'm excited to see and you know I hope they continue making it better maybe they could put in the throwable launch pads into this mode just to really increase the amount of fluctuation and abilities that are in here because I feel that the throwable launch pads are would be perfect here because we can't build but launch pads existed in horde rush with building enabled so might as well put them in here just because we have a zero build version of the item but of course I'd love to hear in the comments down below what do you think about the recent horde rush patches and changes do you like them do you dislike them do you just not care about horde rush you want to see more content new skins or whatever in the game I'm just curious what everyone's thinking because personally I'm really enjoying it right I'm having a wonderful time and I wanted to make a whole entire video just you know documenting all the patches because I know there's some people out there who may have been avoiding horde rush just because it seemed a little bit too hard in the zero build mode at least when it first released also I love how right when I pause the video I open up a chest and instantly I find the burst rifle that I was looking for so hey there's the burst rifle you know I got it from a chest and that's just something to keep in mind you're most likely gonna find these from chests. now it was in the chrome area so it does make sense that you know it would be in one of those just cuz you know chrome chest actually guarantee those type of spawns but it's just something that I was like hey why couldn't I get this sooner you know but with that said that's pretty much all I have to say about horde rush I'm really enjoying the mode hope you guys enjoyed this little recap of all the content changes to it and I'll see you champs and champs tomorrow with other YouTube video. Peace out.